Many of you were able to attend the launch, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did, although I'm sure that the view was not quite as unique. Uh, here's a picture of the Big Bird sitting on the pad of the uh, vertical assembly building in the background. Uh, we had banker's hours on this flight. We were able to get up uh, around uh, 5 or 6 in the morning, get uh, suited up, make sure our uh, suits worked okay, and uh, walk out. We took one big one look at the uh, Big Bird just before we walked into it, got in the uh, swing arm and walked across and got strapped in. Helped the ground crew check out the spacecraft, and uh, promptly at 11, she lifted off. We when, the, when the main engines ignited, there was a certain amount of shaking and rattling that was obvious. I was wondering if the solids had ignited, uh, but when they when they uh, touch off, there's no doubt. There's uh, a tremendous uh, feeling of commotion and power down there behind you, and a relentless push that is just adds up to the, the ride of a lifetime. Uh, there's nothing that will ever even remotely approach the feeling of uh, first stage on the solids. From uh, my right-hand window uh, lying on, on the back, this is the view if you turn your head 90 degrees to the right and watch. Had a camera pointed out that way. You can see the roll maneuver. Then we went into the very thin overcast and quickly popped out the top. Like Gordo said, it was the uh, ride of a lifetime, uh, lots of vibration, lots of dynamics, and uh, uh, just a relentless push for eight and a half minutes into orbit. Uh, it just was a continuous, uh, compelling, relentless acceleration and push all the way up there. We were able to perform our functions and talk and do our job, but we knew we had a tiger by the tail. The first stage, uh, of course, burned for about two, minute, two, two minutes and six seconds. Uh, I understand you had a good view of it as it came out the top of this cloud, a very spectacular shot. We were uh, uh, VFR on top, as the pilots say, uh, very quickly uh, with uh, very little actual instrument time. The roll maneuver was uh, performed precisely, and uh, uh, we uh, got the separation of the solid rocket motors at two minutes and six seconds. And uh, we didn't feel it or hear it, but we did see that flash of flame around the cockpit as the uh, solid rockets were jettisoned and uh, parachuted into the ocean where they were picked up uh, uh, so that they can be refurbished and used again. This is a close-up picture of the uh, solid rocket motor breaking away from the uh, external tank. It's interesting that as soon as the solids uh, burn out and are jettisoned, uh, everything smooths out absolutely as smooth as glass. Uh, it's, it's a nicest ride, uh, smoother than any airliner any of you have ever flown on. Uh, we uh, got the main engine cut off at 8 minutes and 34 seconds. Uh, we waited for the external tank to be jettisoned. This is an underneath picture of the tank being jettisoned and uh, falling away from the spacecraft. Uh, uh, shortly thereafter, we ignited the uh, maneuvering engines to uh, put us into orbit. Uh, we made two firings of the uh, orbital maneuvering system. Uh, so after about it, uh, 45 minutes, we were in orbit and able to open the payload bay doors. If you look quickly, uh, that's Los Angeles, the uh, South Bay, Palos Verdes Peninsula, then on down to San Diego. Then a few seconds later, that's the Salton Sea and the Imperial Valley in California, which greeted us as we uh, opened that first Halo Bay door. The uh, sight was ex as spectacular for us as it was uh, for you, and as you see it in these pictures here, it was uh, truly a... Uh, a momentous event for us, and uh, most impressive, uh, the pictures uh, and the memories don't do it justice. You just have to go back and do it again in order to appreciate it fully. But the uh, morning of the first day was when we first uh, got the, uh, the remotely controlled arm uh, made by the Canadians into business. Second day, actually, uh, Jack, if you remember. Uh, and Jack had discovered some tile missing out in front of the windshield. If you notice those uh, square, irregular uh, patches uh, in front of the windshield, those are actual missing white tile. So we moved the arm up uh, and got it over to the uh, right-hand side and looked along uh, on a kind of a grazing angle here, but had a view and found some more tile missing. Uh, however, those were, the, those were relatively insignificant. As it turned out, on entry, I've heard the number that the highest temperature noted on the top in the area of the missing tile was only 140 degrees or so. Actually, the tile didn't slow us down much. Uh, we knew that uh, lots of people would be concerned about it, and uh, so we uh, erased it from our thought and uh, went on to do the other business. Uh, we did have some bending from uh, one of the main engines uh, that uh, was with us for about uh, two to three days, which we reported, and uh, 
it was determined what the venting was. Well, this is the way it looked, however, when the sunlight shone on it uh, with a dark background. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, after about two or three days, it went away. Now an inside shot. I'm at the uh, manipulator operator station, and Jack has taken this movie right here as I uh, brought the plasma diagnostic package out of the payload bay for the first time. We put the uh, manipulator on through uh, the loaded operations, that is, with an attached payload for the first time in its uh, ever. Uh, and exercise all the very complex sequences that the manipulator arm has built into it. Uh, some of those involve manually positioning the arm, others uh, with the software doing it automatically, and the, uh, our job merely to monitor uh, for safety considerations. Uh, we operated the arm night and day, so when the sun went down, we turned on lights in the payload bay and found that they were uh, adequate to see it visually as well as operate our television system. Periodically it would uh, show up in the overhead window as you see it pictured here and uh, then it would be moved to the forward uh, uh, part of the space trap up over the nose to uh, make some measurements and uh, it was spectacular to just to watch it uh, come real close and, uh, and uh, silently uh, but smoothly move to its next point in the sequence uh, and uh, this gives you a full appreciation of the total spectacle of the background. Uh, this is a picture that was taken uh, as we were going over the Baja Peninsula in an ascending path over the United States. I'm bringing the uh, plasma diagnostic package back in to latch it back down uh, in its uh, mounting mechanism. And this was one of the uh, big questions on the flight, how well that mechanism would work. Uh, we found that the task was much easier, uh, easier than it had been done during any of the ground tests. In fact, the whole thing, which had been anticipated and planned to take maybe as much as 30 minutes, we did on three separate occasions in uh, less than five minutes each time. And finally, uh, here you see the arm being put back down in its uh, cradle, its mounting mechanism, and this uh, in a backup mode, which is uh, which is the, the crudest mode, one if the whole primary system failed, we tested that backup mode and found that that whole thing of uh, cradling the arm and rolling it inboard as uh, we're doing here was uh, very easily done even with the uh, lack of instrumentation that the backup system gives you. One of the things we uh, really enjoyed the most about being there was the ability to get around uh, very quickly and easily. We could be anywhere in the spacecraft in a flash. And uh, this is the head first approach uh, down through the hatch and uh, down to the mid deck uh, where we had uh, these stowage lockers in which we had uh, lots of uh, apparatus, equipment, clothing, and uh, uh, books and other kinds of things that we needed. If you didn't like the head first approach, you could always do the feet first one and uh, glide down just about that quickly and uh, be right where Mission Control wanted you to be. We had a number of uh, experiments in the cabin to, uh, to uh, take care of. This is the plant growth unit that operated perfectly through the entire mission. We would read the uh, temperature in the uh, six plant growth compartments uh, three times a day and uh, read those back to the ground. One of the things that you would all enjoy is the ability to uh, manage uh, packages very readily and easily up there. No need to set anything down. You just uh, leave it floating in space. Here uh, I'm working the electrophoresis experiment. Uh, I've taken one of the sample columns uh, after it's been frozen in the, uh, in the uh, main apparatus and stowing it in a holder and putting it back in a uh, liquid nitrogen cooled uh, freezer that we had that kept that frozen throughout the uh, remainder of the flight and the trip back to Houston. The, uh, we had a hygiene area in which we could uh, wash up, uh, shave, brush our teeth and so forth and uh, uh, we had uh, soap and uh, running water, so it was uh, very easy to uh, keep yourself clean. And um, here's a picture of Gordo uh, establishing himself in that area. And why don't you move the coat there, Gordo, and get it out of the way. Thank okay. You. And of course, one of the things Gordo had to do was uh, brush his hair every morning. Eating was a real pleasure, uh, of course. <laughs> and 
it's, it's impossible to knock your milk off the table up there, kiddos. It's, there's no way to get in trouble with Mom. Uh, you just uh, leave things float around, and when you want them, you just grab them out of thin air, and uh, you can eat standing on your head or uh, however you please. When you say eating was a real pleasure and you hear it from Jack Lawson, you can believe it. He really means it. <laughs> the, uh, most of the food that we had was mixed with water, and uh, then we had a heater we could put it in if we wanted to uh, make it warm. Uh, we had an exerciser on board that we uh, used a couple of times, and uh, we could uh, position ourselves on it. It was a treadmill which was self-propelled and uh, get our exercise uh, no hands. Uh, in the 10 minutes I ran on this treadmill, I think uh, we could figure out the number. Something like uh, 3,000 miles we traveled. <laughs> Here's a man who ran 3,000 miles in just a few minutes. But this was a, a new device that was added for this flight, and uh, we think it uh, performed very well and be a good addition for uh, future flights. And uh, we used it a uh, few different times. Uh, we took the whole exercise thing very seriously. As you'll see, uh, this was not the only thing we did to keep in shape. Of course, you have to create work for yourself up in the space. Your body does less work uh, up there than it does when you're just lying in bed sleeping against the force of gravity. So we had to devise a number of uh, exercise routines. <laughs> Here. <laughs> now, not many of you can do this right here. He doesn't put them on one leg at a time like everybody else. <laughs> as soon as I uh, get this down, I'm going to get a Dorothy Hamill leg and try out for the ice cream. <laughs> and, of course, Marines aren't happy unless they do their push ups every day. <laughs> That wasn't too tough, so, uh, you know, look, one arm. And if you want to, you can do foot up. <laughs> now, if you really got frustrated, you could do this. <laughs> well, you really can see we didn't do much work up there, and finally came time to come home, so we uh, got the payload bay doors closed, and. Uh, and uh, got a wave off for mission control. But uh, finally the next day they decided they'd bring us in anyway. And uh, here are a few shots that uh, many of you were able to witness from the ground personally of the uh, orbiter making its approach and landing at uh, Holloman Airport, at uh, White Sands uh, Northrop Strip there. Near Holloman Air Force Base. We provided lots of support for the whole operation there. The uh, entry was a, as spectacular as the uh, boost was uh, in terms of dynamics and, uh, and sensation and uh, excitement and high adventure. It uh, was a machine that slowed down from 25 times the speed of sound to zero in about uh, 25 to 30 minutes. And uh, it, had a, it felt like it just had the brakes on all the way and uh, we had uh, one of the uh, most spectacular quick tours at low altitude and high speed in the United States anybody will ever have. The uh, airplane was flown uh, manually uh, from uh, about 40,000 feet down to about 10,000 feet. Here's a picture out Gordo's window of what uh, he saw from inside. We just uh, rolled into the right bank, turning uh, a 90 degree turn from our approach heading onto final approach. And as you uh, see the white sands come into view and look closely, the uh, runway uh, will become visible but then uh, go out of sight again. There's a, the approach to the runway right there. But uh, because of the uh, strong westerly wind, we had to crab to the right. Right now, Jack is engaging the audio system, and you can see it making a, a quick correction to the right, then back to the left. But with that uh, correction for the wind drift, it's hiding the view of the runway. Until we get down here a little closer, and you'll be able to see our aim point come into view. You'll see a triangle and a rectangle. We are actually aiming for the rectangle, and there's some lights in there, not readily visible till just about now, that helped us uh, determine that the guidance system had us exactly on the uh, proper glide slope. 
Okay, uh, we got it firmly established on the uh, inner glide slope and, um, and uh, then took over manually and uh, made the landing and the, uh, and the rollout. We used the whole runway, although we didn't have to. It would have been possible to have uh, stopped much sooner had it been uh, necessary. And uh, here is a final shot of the uh, uh, final part of the approach. Uh, Gordo got the wheels down at 275 knots, so right on the money. And um, we uh, broke the rate of descent right in here and uh, then landed and uh, made the rollout. I noticed that the uh, wheel, nose wheel was going down a little uh, more quickly than I wanted it to and uh, had to hold it off some. In doing so, I uh, over-rotated a little bit, kind of popped the wheelie there, but uh, no harm done. And the, uh, the uh, Columbia made a good smooth rollout. Uh, at the end of it, we made a little nose wheel steering test and uh, stopped it uh, before the end of the, the uh, uh, drawn out runway. Although, as I mentioned, uh, we just used very light braking and could have stopped it much more quickly. We uh, assisted the uh, ground personnel uh, in securing the spacecraft and shutting down some of the systems. Uh, finally, they uh, decided to let us out by the fact that we wanted to stay a little longer and met the sunshine there at the White Sands Missile Range. And uh, uh, we have apparently picked the right time to come because the wind kind of abated and let up for us, although it picked up later. The support at uh, White Sands was uh, incredible, and uh, it was a great team effort uh, with uh, NASA, contractor people, and the Department of Defense to provide the landing opportunities there in a very short time. So it's a tribute to our whole American team for the way that the final part of our flight worked out.